and uh, good morning for all of you who are joining us for this uh, special discussion regarding the events of this last weekend who has the potential of shifting the course of the war or making a dramatic uh, rearrangement of the overall equation of strategic over Israel. And we are talking, of course, about uh, striking and eliminating the leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, and most of the senior commanders and the road of its uh, military capabilities. With us to discuss the implementation of of the, those uh, uh, trends are three of the senior researcher of the Institute, Karmit Valensi, who is leading the research on Syria and Hezbollah, the Northern Front, Orna Mizrahi, who is the leader analyst on Lebanon and Hezbollah, and Sima Shine, who leads around the program of analyzing Iran and the Shiite axis. Thank you all for joining us in this important meeting. Let me start with the most urgent question, the successor. Who is going to replace Nasrallah? Who, what can we know about him? And how does uh, uh, Hezbollah revive or reform its command and control system that was damaged dramatically in the last uh, 10 days? Well, obviously, we're facing a really dramatic uh, event, not only in Lebanon, but also from a regional perspective. I think there are far-reaching strategic implications that are yet to be studied. Um, and when it comes to Hezbollah, uh, again, very complicated story, a uh, very complicated uh, issue to uh, think about a successor, uh, an efficient successor. Nasrallah is a, was, a, was a very prominent uh, figure within the organization. He has a unique role. I find it almost impossible to find a, an adequate res- replacement uh, for this kind of, of leader. It, it wasn't just a military commander. It was much more than that. It was a symbol. It was a religious symbol, uh, a charismatic leader, a skilled politician, uh, admired by the Lebanese community, mostly uh, the Shiite community. And generally speaking, all the Israel opponents basically saw him as the, as the ultimate leader, uh, the ultimate uh, opponent to Israel. Uh, he managed to maneuver in between different levels of war. He was a, a strategist. He also had the ability to translate his long-term vision, his strategic vis- vision, his ideological vision into more practical measure to the operational level and also to the most tactical decisions within the organization. So it will be almost impossible to find someone in this kind of level. Uh, the, 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 the successor that... Uh, But, uh, let, let me add something else. He's also a very senior commander in the Quds Force and the IRJC. He... He advised the Yemens, the Yemens, the Houthis in Yemen. He directs the, the fourth generation of the Kataib Hezbollah in Iraq. And he's considered to be the man to go to if you want to decide the strategy against Israel. So that's very unique. And mainly after the Suleimani strike, which eliminated the senior commander of Quds Force, that's another element that relates to the Iranian nexus also. That's also going to be void. Exactly. Exactly. So it's not just a local Lebanese implication for the organization, but for the entire axis on its regional uh, uh, theaters. And as you said, it was prim- very prominent in the uh, discussions with the Iranian. They saw him as a partner. It's not just a proxy. Uh, and the Iranian will uh, need to find someone else to replace him, again, not to the same level. Uh, then the new guy uh, appeared to be Hashem Sefi Adin. He's the head of the Hezbollah's uh, executive council and he's uh, Nasrallah's likely successor. Um, he has family ties uh, to, the, uh, to Nasrallah. He's the cousin of Nasrallah. His son is married to uh, Qasem Soleimani, the, commander of the, the former commander of the Quds Force. Uh, Daughter. Daughters, Daughter. yeah. Um, Uh, so he has the right family ties, he has the right prestige, but nothing similar to Nasrallah's charisma, to Nasrallah's capabilities. And we need to emphasize one more thing is uh, getting the, the um, is, you know, handling the organization in a very, very weak mm-hmm. point. He's getting a um, harmed organization with, you know, Israel inflicted the, the most, uh, the very severe damage to the organization. He's a very, in a very low position in terms of its military capabilities, its uh, local Lebanese prestige and status. 
And it's region, regional position. I mm-hmm. mean, the fact that... And of that course, the hive, that, that is the senior commanders that he can uh, uh, get in uh, touch with are all gone. Like, it seems like there's a lack of leadership with experience, military experience that can advise him. Exactly. You're a new guy needs a new replacement, need uh, surrounding, uh, supporting surrounding uh, commanders and officers to support him, to advise him, and he's basically is going to leave the organization almost by himself. What, what about uh, Naim Qasem, the, the name that... So the uh, deputy, yeah, the deputy of Hassan Nasrallah, Sheikh Naim Qasem, is a religious figure, is less prominent, less... Uh, uh, Um, seen in, in the, in the uh, Lebanese media, uh, but it's more of a re- religious symbol rather than a you know, commander. He's, he will probably replace uh, Hassan Nasrallah in the following days, but a very temporary replacement. And then uh, the Shura Majlis, uh, uh, the council, the Shura council uh, will probably decide about uh, Hashem Sefi Adin. A very fragile, very unconvenient situation for the organization, and it's going to be interesting to see where what is the agendas of uh, Hashem Safi Adin. I'm not sure he's uh, know exactly by himself where to That go right now. The priority of Iran. And the priority of Iran. Yeah. So, so, but we need to re- remind ourselves that when people come into position, they change. The, 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 the responsibility makes them work differently, and it's very hard to predict that How, it, how he will perform according to his last, uh, to his last position as a deputy under the leader, under the great charismatic leader like Nasrallah. So we need to be modest in our way of, uh, of, of predicting the future. But still, the basic conditions for him to get control and revive the organization, he's starting in a very, very low point, which... leads me to all now let's let's discuss the organization and the state what that mean to the internal strength or of, of Hezbollah and his uh, possibility of action and what it this mean is very important this the state level you probably know that there are some folks who say that Lebanon is not a state it's just a so bunch of clans yeah, clans and tribes with no formal structure of a normal state but it seems like in the past or, or under Nasrallah's leadership it creates some kind of a stable you chaotic situation on brink of chaos which created stability now when he is eliminated and all the system is shaken how does that influence Lebanon and how is that and how do you predict the, what will happen with Hezbollah right now okay let's uh, first talk about the organization uh, as you said it's uh, the organ- uh, organization is weaker than before for sure he lost a lot of his commanders he lost the head that was responsible both for the military apparatus and the social economic activity of uh, of uh, the organization for its community for the Shiite community he was the the biggest the one that controlled everything so it's it's a big void uh, for the organization um, and they lost a lot of capabilities if you have you have mentioned before but uh, Hezbollah dis- didn't disappear there's still an uh, organization there are still thousands of uh, activists both military activists and 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 uh, 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 civilian activist and they're all committed to the organization and I suppose that they will want to continue and t- to uh, recover from the the big blow that they have uh, they they we uh, uh, put on on their heads so they still are organization and we are going to suffer from it because they are still have their uh, um, um, remain capabilities and they are going to use it against that as they can and I think that the, the situation right now that there is no one that decides who uh, uh, makes what and uh, in what scenarios is more maybe in some way more dangerous for us than it was uh, Um, uh, before I must say that according to what uh, I was uh, looking at what Nasrallah was thinking and what what was its logic and in one way he was the devil we knew and and uh, we knew what is his uh, logic his strategy we understand it and now we have to learn all of it uh, all together again 
uh, so th- we have we uh, uh, the the organization is weak but we have a lot a long way to understand few, few intelligence officers across the board are very sad of the fact that we have lost the equations you know he was so predictable in terms yeah, of, equation. of the equation we knew exactly how to predict because he was so we knew him for so many times and now right now we It's a state that we are going to an uncharted water. But it seems water. that he was wrong. He, he thought that he knows us, but yeah. he didn't know us. After 7th of October, yeah. he didn't um, know uh, us. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, the magic touch didn't work. Yeah. He didn't understand exactly what's going on in the Israeli society. And the fact that uh, maybe we are weak because we are a democracy. We are not weak because we, are, we have our dis- uh, 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 dispute about uh, the, the future of the state. It's not a weakness, it's, it's, it's a strength. It's And he didn't understand that because he, as a tyrant, thinks differently. Yeah. Um, and you now, mentioned also another thing that's very important to the audience, the fact that in the past few days, the um, retribution by Hezbollah was relatively modeled, does not... Imp- Um, implies to what's right, yeah. coming next because restrained. the capability yeah. is still there and they are st- and they are, they've lost the balance right now and we have still need to see what happened after they will revive some of their command and control capabilities so it's it's early stage to declare the the death of their organization or the crumbling of the organization we hear some say that he's on his knees the organization it is not on yet. his knees not, not, yet. not yet we should be very very modest in our predictions regarding Hezbollah so take us to the state level no, are we facing about, another civilian yeah. unrest and or war somebody can think that it's you know it's a, a stage that the Lebanon can you know uh, flourish from this point but there are lots of internal uh, problems uh, in uh, in uh, Lebanon it's actually it's a failed state and I think mostly because of its leaders it's, of course that Hezbollah was one of the reasons for the the, the state to being in such a such a situation as independent uh, uh, militia but it's still the his uh, Hezbollah weaker but is there and and the um, a very corrupt uh, uh, political elite of all sects of both the Christians and the Sunnis cannot and didn't they have their choice their uh, uh, chances to do that but they didn't succeed in uh, bringing uh, Lebanon to a level that it can uh, uh, it can come out from uh, from its crisis and And um, I, I think that now it's, uh, it's a time for them to do that. Israel cannot help them with that. The Western, uh, the Western countries will want to help them. And it's going to be a kind of, you know, uh, struggle between Iran that will want to enter again and to uh, be a very important and influential in, in Lebanon and the Western world. And we'll have to see how uh, it's going to happen. And I think one, just, just one man is me, important. J- just the very important yep. issue that you raised, which really may be a, a humble recommendation to the Western world. We are in a changing situation of the, of the Lebanese system. It, it carries internal potential that can be used in order to create a better future. But if we, there's no, let's say, Western, American, France coherent strategy of... the end state and how to implement that the, the confronting forces by Iran and it excess will re, will reshape Lebanon as it as a kind of its victory its theory of victory how to retaliate against against what happened and to rebuild uh, their presence in Lebanon and control the state two last points one is about Nabi Berry is the chairman of the parliament is also Shiite but the most moderate uh, more moderate than Hezbollah although they were working together and they co- will continue to work together but he, now he becomes more prominent and we have to look at what, what role he's going to take and how we can influence mm-hmm. his role to the moderate side and not to the to again to go in the, in the to be in the hands of Hezbollah and the second one is about the new generation young generation it's it's I think it gives hope for at least for the Lebanese uh, to have something new because there are new voices 
and now they can raise their voice because of the new uh, situation and maybe they can help uh, their country to recover and come and, and become something yeah. else. The new patriot of the, yeah. the, young, the little young generation of Lebanese. Okay, so let's move to the, I think, the biggest questions that we have. We are d- dealing this uh, morning and it regards Iran. Iran lost or not lost the prime jewel Of the Shiite access was uh, intensively crippled in this last uh, they, they probably are now discussing what to do about it. So Sima, uh, to take us through the internal decision process and what are the elements that they are now evaluating in order to construct a new uh, response strategy by Iran and all of the access. So I, I think really Iran is in the uh, worst uh, dilemma it has uh, uh, faced in the last year. Um, on one hand, uh, they have lost, as you say, the, the crown jewel and the, the most important uh, leader in the region in, uh, and the whole strategy of Iran with the proxies and with its, uh, uh, has suffered a, a, a huge, a huge uh, uh, um, A huge uh, block yeah uh, the question is what they do now is not there anymore so now the question that faces uh, Iran uh, is um, I would say there are two sides of the same coin once you do something dramatic there are those who will say that the deterrence of Iran has arose very very dramatically and that it's important that Iran um, improves its deterrence vis-a-vis Israel uh, it's not the first time it's after the assassination of uh, Hania so there is a, a growing uh, tension in inside the camp a very strong camp in Iran saying we are not uh, uh, we are not um, challenging Israel in, in the in the mm-hmm. way that uh, uh, improves our deterrence on one hand on the other hand there is there are those who say uh, one we don't want to uh, to get into a, a full-scale war that will bring the US and we might find ourselves vis-a-vis the US on the other and at the same time they do say Israel has put a trap before the before I- I- Iran and we are going to get inside of that they want us to be involved in the war they will retaliate as the Prime Minister has said in the uh, security in the UN uh, assembly uh, that if Israel will be attacked we will retaliate and from Iran's point of view it's uh, really a make or break because on one hand they understand that uh, nothing that was before will be the same after uh, with the uh, collapse of uh, of the, of Hezbollah not that Hezbollah will disappear nobody thinks like that but Hezbollah will not be the same strong p- uh, force in the in the uh, uh, system that Iran as as uh, produced uh, around Israel what they call the the uh, a circle of uh, fire around Israel uh, and the, the question is uh, what is stronger uh, from the point of view of deterrence uh, attacking Israel and 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 uh, taking into uh, and also opening a possibility of retaliation and uh, some wider uh, um, uh, wider scale of war or uh, deciding not to do it and uh, suffering from the consequences yeah of uh, of yeah yeah they are, they are, they are piling open accounts yeah and as long as they exactly. probably will be internal discussion is that as long we are piling and we are discussing about retaliation but we're doing nothing, nothing. Israel on the other hand expands its activities yeah. erodes our deterrence and being more and more blunt about it so we need some Actually, somehow to block yeah it. they don't have a good uh, good solution to the situation both solutions are bad for them mm-hmm. and they and they it's my it's it's even worse because uh, the new strategy of the last months I would say with the new president was to go to to New York to talk to the world and to present um, a possibility of a dialogue with the West yeah. with Europe and with with them with the US they even have been saying that they are willing now to talk directly to the US yeah. what they didn't do before so there is a there it's really in the most worst time for Iran 
uh, what happened now. And it seems like their operational kit tool is not that working because if they want to push all the proxies to a full-scale retaliation, they've already tried that yeah. tool, and it seems like Israel is surviving and tackling that exa- in, exa- in, a, in a very impressive manner. And the crown jewel, as you said, Hezbollah is now crippled for a per- short period of time. Yeah. Damn, that may tr- drive them unwillingly to retaliate from Iran, from Iran's soil. Yeah, it didn't work in April when they retaliated. Of course, they can do more, as they were, have been thinking before, they can do more wider. Um, they have the capabilities. Um, the question is, what will be the result of that? The escalation. Yeah, yeah. the escalation, and the, uh, whether Iran is uh, capable of, uh, of standing vis-a-vis the escalation. And, and, and what are... about the, the, the ideas of using maybe nuclear deterrence? So there is more and more vo- there are more and more voices in Iran saying that the only deterrence, the only effective deterrence will be a nuclear capability. Mm-hmm. It was before, it is strengthened now. And as we have been saying uh, all along the year, the question of what will be the, the uh, calculation of Iran at the end of the war, one day it will stop and we'll, uh, we'll see the results of a year or more of a war. What will be uh, their decision how to improve their deterrence? And it might be uh, it's very difficult for them because they have to do something that the, the Americans and the, and the others have been saying, you know, Biden has said it and others, not on my watch. Iran will not be nuclear on my watch. And I think uh, they understand that there is a limit to what they can do. But um, as I said, they don't have good choices yeah. and they will, sa- they will decide, I think, at the end of the day, they will take a choice that is uh, the, the less worse than the others, not a good one. So let's, uh, let's talk about the United States, because I think, and you probably agree with me, that Iran's worst case scenario is a direct uh, confrontation with the United States. And it seems like the United States is playing a very dominant role in the Middle East from the beginning of the war, especially in deterring Iran. What do you think that's going to be, how will that influence the overall balance towards Iran in the Yeah, you're right. US is the, the U.S. is the, the most important element in the calculation of Iran. No question about that. Um, and I, we know that there are channels of, the, of communication between the U.S. and Iran. Uh, they were before. They probably are already operating uh, f- on full scale. Uh, the Americans want to deter Iran, want to stop the, uh, any possibility of escalation. Uh, we heard the president saying that he ordered the Pentagon to do whatever is needed, which means uh, strengthening the uh, already very wide presence of Iran in the region. Um, I think uh, it's, a, it's a situation where both sides believe, understand that their, their position in the, in the region is, will be determined in a way from the way they will calculate now their steps. Uh, the, Iran wants to, uh, to, to uh, have its posture vis-a-vis you know, the Gulf states and mm-hmm. others as a strong, uh, strong uh, uh, player in the region. Uh, the U.S., Uh, of course wants to so to, to show and we know that Saudi Arabia was the very close to a to a, a defensive pact with uh, the US so from the US point of view it's very important to be a uh, To be seen and to be a, a present and, uh, and deterring uh, in the region uh, on the other hand the US is a month and a half before elections a uh, very close uh, rates between uh, Trump and the Harris uh, it's a um, the, the last thing they want is a war in the Middle East yeah. <laughs> that's but, a, a nightmare for the for but, the election but, but maybe that's the hidden strategy of uh, in the Israeli cabinet to to In a, in, to escalate the war to a complete annihilation of the axis by eliminating Hezbollah capabilities and driving United States in a direct collision, collision course with Iran over its retribution so that there may be a possible scenario where Iran retaliates because it has no other capabilities from Iran's soil. 
that involves the United States defending Israel and maybe, just maybe, to gather more votes from the Republican side of the aisle, be more blunt, more strong, more aggressive in order to perform that although we are yeah. uh, the Biden Democrats, we, are, we know how to... Uh, to tackle uh, the to, Iranian yeah, threats. So, so yeah. that's a threat that yeah. the Iranian must ca- calculate, yeah. I think. I think. I think the people in Iran that do not support a, an attack on Israel are saying exactly that from their point of view. But you know, um, uh, once we are talking, there is one thing that uh, comes to, to my mind, and that is the possibility, uh, since Iran has tried once to attack Israel, and nothing happened in Israel because of the uh, system, air defense, air, yeah. air defense system, um, the calculation of Iran between doing something that will not harm Israel might be, again, uh, they will do something, they will show, you know, there is a huge criticism in Iran and outside that uh, Iran gives all its proxies to fight and sits uh, back and doesn't do anything. So it might be a nice so scenario. We have, we have just run out of time, but I want to final remarks from Karmit and Orna. Karmit, take us to the region. What's happened? What can be, how can we explain the joy of some Syrians uh, over, the, uh, over the strike on Hezbollah leader? And not just in Syria, I think it's all over the Middle East. Yeah, so in many countries in the past uh, few days, we started to see expression of ha- basically happiness and celebrating uh, the elimination of uh, Hassan Nasrallah, who, you know, in, in the Syrian case, they view him as a butcher, not just Assad. He's the one who tortured, uh, is responsible for the killing of, of uh, half a million uh, Syrian in, in, in the civil war. And this is, it would be very interesting to follow the consequences of Nasrallah's elimination on the Syrian theater and on the region in general. But in Syria, it's very interesting because of the prominent role that Syria is playing within the axis of resistance, a very uh, prominent hub, important hub for the axis. And it's going to be interesting to see how after, you know, a decade of a very great investment and resources that the, the Hezbollah and the Axis invested in Syria, where is he heading now on the area of uh, the day after a, a Nasrallah? Obviously, from, from Assad's perspective, it's a very negative development. He lost his main supporter, his patron, his partner. Uh, and now it's going to be interesting to see uh, where Assad is going to how Assad is going to handle uh, this situation. We talked earlier about the um, um, opportunity that this situation uh, holds for the Western country, for the regional uh, uh, countries. And I think it's in Syria it's even more interesting because w- what we've seen in the past two years is the regional normalization with Assad where the main goal of these Arab countries who started to embrace Assad all over again was to uh, create sort of a distance between Assad and the Iranian and Hezbollah from, from the axis and to uh, bring him more closer to the uh, uh, pragmatic Sunni uh, camp. And it's very interesting to see if now they have more leverage on the day after Nasrallah to to take uh, Assad on their side. And Do you to think that there's, a kind of this, this, the, that opportunity to I drive Assad to a more moderate? Uh, it's a very optimistic, some would say even unrealistic uh, scenario. A bit naive. But, but Assad is, uh, is the main uh, consideration he cares about is its own survivability. Yeah. So when we, you think about your survivability, ideology uh, gets a l- lower uh, uh, weight. So I think that, you know, if the, the Arab countries, the Sunni countries has more leverage right now to uh, uh, at least to diverge uh, and to uh, minimize his uh, influence, the Iranian influence in, in Hezbollah's influence in Syria. And, and it, again, it would be very interesting to follow the situation there. But the Syrian opposition is celebrating, especially in areas like Idlib, celebrating the demise of, of uh, Hassan Nasrallah and perhaps even the Iranian role in Syria, hoping for a new era in, in uh, Syria. Uh, I saw on social media that how they uh, praise Israel for its uh, brave and also, uh, you know, they will aspire that Israel will not only stop with Nasrallah, but continue yeah, to the elimination of Assad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and the final question regarding one of the most maybe sensitive and crucial issues, 
still almost a year after the beginning of the war 101 uh, hostages are still in captivity in Hamas Sinwar looking at the expansion of the war looking northward what do you think or now uh, we can expect from Sinwar over the, that very dramatic uh, turning point and So two remarks about that. First, for the implication for Israel. I think that we have the ability now, after what we have done in the North, to create this disconnection of the linkage that Nasrallah was the one that uh, making between the Northern Front and what's going on in the South. He always said, you stop in the South, I'll stop in the North. But now we are, uh, our hand is, we have the upper hand on, on the North, so we can disconnect it. And I think, and we have to think about the day after and the political solution, that the political solution now is, is disconnected. And the Americans that I hope will, uh, will come to help us with the political, to, to uh, conduct this uh, uh, negotiation about the, the political and the arrangement in, in, in the uh, South, uh, we'll do it all together because it's important to continue with the hostage deal. The hostage deal is one of the po- in, important goals for the Israeli government and the Israeli people. So they have to do it, they have to do it side by side, disconnected the, re- the arrangements for the, the day after in the North and for the uh, hostage uh, deal in the South. I, the last let me point, just emphasize that this connection between the two fronts also helps promote the new objectives of the war to return back the, the The, the, our civilians there because if there is a continuation linkage people might think I'm returning back to my house on the border of Lebanon but if you'll continue the war in Gaza to eliminate and to eradicate the remains of Hamas what prim, what the kind of guarantee do I get for not renewal of the fire from Hezbollah and evacuating my home again disconnecting in that manner supports the Uh, achieving the objectives You're that very uh, right I think that this is one of the strategic achievement that we can use about disconnecting the two fronts uh, now about Sinwar uh, uh, himself he wants regional war this is what he wants because he thinks that if there is a war and Israel is engaged with all the other fronts and this is uh, this was uh, I don't know strategy thoughts uh, that it can help him to survive he wants his survival he wants to come again and build up his forces uh, uh, from a very low uh, point but this is his uh, vision and now the, the regional war is going to help him what was happening now in the last few uh, two weeks in the north is not is is very bad bad for him because he lost the possibility that Hezbollah will create you know this very full scale enormous war that will uh, 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 exhaust and weaken Israel we are not at that point but still we have the possibility as Sima uh, as uh, explained before the possibility of the retaliation of the Iranians and the other and we still on a point that we we could have a regional war and this is what he strives to and uh, I hope that uh, his uh, illusions will uh, uh, will uh, fall again yeah. hopefully the attention for the hostage strategy will not shift also in the internal discussions or uh, and the external one and I think in that manner, uh, expanding the war to the north may have a negative effect on the campaign to release the hostages because we have other attention and we need somehow to balance those two very contradicted if so trends. So we have to mobilize the Americans again for that, I think, and for they have two missions in the north and in the south. So uh, let's uh, sum with a view to the future. First of all, Hezbollah is not destroyed. It can recover and it has still capabilities to damage Israel. And we must not be too optimistic of the past uh, three or four days. There's still capability that can be manipulated. Secondly, we are still before the Iranian decision-making regarding how to retribute, how to... To, uh, to to respond to what happened and the range of possibilities for the Iranians shrinking in a manner that it may lead them eventually to strike from Iran uh, soil and that may lead to a vo- broader regional uh, aspect and third we must not forget that we have still the mission of 
of defeating Hamas and returning back our hostages. And we must uh, pay attention to that very important uh, goal while we are conducting the expansion of the war to the other regions. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. And thank you very much for your accurate observation. Thank you.